Thanks, Matt. Good afternoon, everybody. Let's start you know, talking about uh, setbacks a little bit. Just a couple of words about that. You know, obviously, uh, everybody in Kennedy on Saturday witnessed uh, ex us experiencing one of those. And I know a lot of people are disappointed, certainly our fans, but I can assure you nobody more disappointed than uh, the people directly involved, uh, especially our players. You know, they invest an awful lot. So uh, but just needless to say, you know, anytime you experience a setback, it's painful. Uh, one thing for sure, I'm sure the team, you don't get second chances, you don't get games back. So it's part of the deal. And I think the biggest other big takeaway for us is just that you know, it's one game and we still have uh, 10 opportunities in front of us. So that's, you know, that's a big takeaway there. Uh, unfortunately, you know, setbacks are part of every season. It's not always in the form of a loss. But always you have challenges, and that's you know one of the axioms of going into a season. Just understand there are going to be things that happen that aren't planned, uh, maybe not wanted, and how you deal with those is really what is important. And that's kind of where our focus is. That's what we do on Sundays. Learn from what uh, what took place, and then uh, you know begin working through it. And the biggest thing is just how you choose to respond, and that's it's been that way forever in sports. So that's a big takeaway there. Uh, that was the message post game. It was the message Sunday, and uh, you know it's quiet here Sunday and you know business like all that type of thing. But uh, win, lose, or draw, there's always learning opportunities. I think that's the most important thing that gets done. So I think that got done, and then uh, just you know specifically, I really don't feel a lot different than I did after the ball game. Uh, the major takeaways, you know, we had a good field position, one off a turnover, one off a really good drive ball down inside the five and then come out with a touchdown in either case. So those were certainly uh, you know big factors in the ball game, the outcome. And then in three of their scoring drives, we have four big plays. And I think you've heard me say before, uh, defensively, it kind of starts with that. You know, you want to make people work. You want to make them earn what they get. And uh, those four plays really, I think, altered the, altered the course of the game. So. Yeah, that, that was a takeaway on Sunday. You know, we moved forward yesterday and uh, began working on Troy. And, you know, a couple words about them. They're out of the Sun Belt Conference, 11 win team last year, had a really good football team. And, and now they're a little bit of a team in transition, if you will. They've got a new coaching staff, uh, previous staff has moved on, and, and a lot of new players, too. And um, so it's kind of unique. You know, we've played. Two straight games now where both both staffs were very established, the programs were established, knew, knew for the most part who the players were and what their uh, tendencies were going to be. All right, now we're piecing those things together a little bit and just, you know, A, trying to figure out, uh, you know, what to expect, what to match up against. And then secondly, you know, you always have to project a little bit because they're uh, in, in the middle of, you know, installing these systems. So I'm not sure what their players uh, are capable of taking or not taking. You know, so what kind of changes we'll see from the first two games. You know, it's part of the, you know, part of the game that goes on. But bottom, bottom line is this, you know, we, uh, we're in a match up against them. We've got to be sound. they got to be flexible, not knowing exactly what's going to happen. So, you know, that's every week. That's the uh, first challenge is matching up against your opponent. And then the bigger challenge is working to improve and working in efficiency areas that, uh, that we identify. So uh, really no different than any other week that way. Captains this week are the same same four guys. Got Jay Higgins, Quinn Schulte on defense, uh, Luke and uh, Kate McNamara on the offensive side of the ball. Then lastly, just to uh, tell you a little bit about our kid captain, uh, Maya Gilchrist from center point. Uh, will be with us on Saturday uh, when she was really young, just an infant. Uh, she was diagnosed with a tumor uh, on her brain stem. 18-month-year-old uh, at that point, and was treated at uh, Stead Family Hospital. And unfortunately, uh, cancer reappeared at age five, and then again at age 12, uh, treated again, and then was doing really well. About a year ago, she was tired, kind of uh, sluggish, and uh, they discovered she had a rare form of brain, excuse me, blood cancer. So she's had a lot of battles, is doing really well right now. She's an 18-year-old who's doing very, very well, and uh, it'd be really great to uh, have her with us. Obviously, she really epitomizes how to handle setbacks, you know, if anything else. So we'll be excited to have her join us, and I'll throw it out for questions. We'll start with Chad and then Scott. Hey, Chad Lace, the coach of one register. Uh, I don't know if you thought about this, but the, the game the other day, so many analogies to the 2002 Iowa State game. So we ran the ball great. Uh, you know, veteran team, big second athlete, but melted away. Kind of some weird stuff happened, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't know. I just wondered if you kind of drew that comparison and also like that was a long time ago, but like sure. what what did that particular team do to move on from such a disappointment in that way? Yeah, I can even top you on that one. Uh, coincidentally, Brad Banks was here oh. on Sunday uh, in the office. He was at the game and came through, and you know we got to spend some time with him. We talked about that game, yeah, you know. I always think the great thing about Brad's story and probably that team story uh, is how he did respond. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody knows Brad Banks, player of the year, and runner up to the Heisman, and uh, obviously played really well all season long. Uh, but it but went an easy path. And, you know, what's your reference in there? That third quarter especially was really rough. And I share that story a lot with our players annually, mm -hmm. just uh, in that the, you know, the essence of what Brad did that year, in my opinion, is. Um, you know, I don't think anybody felt worse. You know, talk about investment. You know, nobody feels worse uh, after a game in that case uh, than him. But, you know, he went back to work. Uh, and Brad's pretty unflappable. That's one, one characteristic he really, uh, you know, I think embodies. And two weeks later, we're in the very same situation. You know, we got a big lead at Penn State, and all of a sudden that fourth quarter disappeared and we're in overtime. And I, I would suggest a big part of the reason we won that game was Brad's performance in overtime. So, you know, it's just the kind of one of those stories I cover annually at the team. And, uh, you know, that, that's the right idea. Like, that's what you're looking to do. And then the rest is history, not that the whole season was smooth, but it was hard. So, you know, those are things we talk about in camp. That's part of the curriculum, if you will. And just, you know, during the season, you're going to encounter disappointments. And that, that's one of the more disappointing losses I've ever been involved with on a personal basis. But, you know, life goes on. And that's what, what you do uh, in response that really matters. Scott Dockerman, The Athletic. I, I wanted to ask you about um, the run game where it looks like you're not necessarily running the same type of outside uh, slant. It's more of a tighter slant that's maybe more directed towards the, the tackle. And it also seems like your guards are able to kind of be tighter in the way they get to the second level. Um, kind of how did that evolution take place? And so far, at least through two, through two games, it seems to have some really good yeah, I mean, really, technically, there are a couple of slants that we have. Um, one one is wider, to your point, and then one is a little tighter, to your point, and then also an inside zone scheme and a couple other things with it. But, um, yeah, bottom line, and what you saw Saturday, uh, the way they play their defense here in interior guys really squeeze the line. So that's why, you know, our guards are coming off the way they were on the linebackers. Against yeah, so other teams, you may get, get guys that are playing deeper and coming over the top, so that kind of dictates what the guards' path can, is going to be. Um, it's a tough defense to run against. I thought we did some really good things there and some good awareness by the guys involved in it. And, uh, but, you know, we, we don't have it figured out. I can promise you if you were in today's practice, you'd see some things that need to get cleaned up. Um, but a lot of it's dictated by, again, we do have a couple different calls here, but it's dictated about how the defense played. And they're, they're really aggressive uh, inside the tackle box, uh, the you know, Iowa State defense is. Uh, Adam Jacoby, Hawkeye Beacon. Uh, Kirk, you mentioned uh, Brad Banks in particular. In 2001, there were a few instances, a few series where you brought him in uh, to relieve uh, McCann just as sort of a change of pace sort of guy. When you look at the QB situation this season, is there ever a situation where you're thinking that maybe Sullivan can be that change of pace, faster QB for uh, somebody like McNamara? Yeah, it was twofold with Brad. You know, part of it was he was a different kind of quarterback than Kyle. Uh, Kyle. Um, we talked a lot about Kyle, too, and, and big takeaway for me was, and uh, Brad shared this with a couple other people, but, you know, he learned. He learned from Kyle. And um, there's a lot of good things that he brought up that day just watching how Kyle performed uh, during the 2001 season. His takeaways from it, I thought they were really, uh, really pretty astute. So, you know, there are two different guys, but our thinking was that, you know, Brad was a guy that we thought had a good future here a year later, and we were going to get him involved if possible uh, weekly. And, but that was dictated by Brad's performance in practice, and yeah, we'll keep an open mind to anything. Obviously, it's going to help us win games now. That's the first priority. And then secondly, if a player, you know, we rotated other positions. It's a little tougher quarterback, and we take the right guy, but Brad certainly was the right guy. Thanks, Bob. John Seth East Cedar Rapids Gazette. First of all, kind of the inevitable injury question. Seems like it's just Seth and Jaden at this point that are still out. Um, yeah, I think Jaden probably will miss this one, it looks like. Got a couple guys that are limited in practice right now, so hopefully they'll be ready by game time. And then with Seth being that limited? No, he's, I, don't, I don't see that happening this week. He's missed too much time. And then with Keel Johnson. Hopefully moving forward, though. Hopefully. Yeah. With Keel Johnson, kind of what's the biggest thing you've seen this year from him compared to last year? 
just think maturity and focus. You know, it's like any player. Um, you know, it's rare for a for a freshman to play a veteran guy. You know, rare. But, uh, you know, he did a lot of good things the last two years. I just think he's really has a much better feel for what he's doing. A little bit more patient than he was, and he's running really strong. Obviously, he had some really nice runs the other day. I thought his best ones were at the end of the game, where he ran strong and broke some tackles. And you know, there there wasn't a lot there, but he was making yards. So to me, uh, if he can keep integrating that into his style of play, it's really going to help us. Uh, Josh, with the Des Moines when when Caleb's playing the way he is, and the O line is playing the way they are, like. I guess from an X's and O's standpoint, what what does that do for the passing game, and like what are what are kind of opportunities you're seeing that are opening up as a result of that? Yeah, I mean those those are areas we were hoping uh, we'd you know be able to build off of because we we're a little bit more veteran, certainly up front. And outside of Kamari, we're, we're pretty veteran in the running back position, so you, and tight ends also. So I mean you're hoping maybe you can get something established there, but you know if we're we're gonna play the way we want to play, we're going to pass the ball more effectively. You know, that uh, certainly was a factor Saturday. And hopefully it's just, you know, something we'll keep getting better at as we move forward. And uh, we've done some good things, done some things that weren't so good. And, you know, it's a little bit of everything, you know, accuracy, route running, things like that, and, uh, and protection at times. So those are the things that we got to get pieced together. And again, just after practice today, there's still a lot to work on. There will be all season long. Uh, Blake Marcy, Hawkeye headquarters. Uh, Kurt, after the game, uh, we talked to Jay Higgins, and he was one of the first people to say, you know what, like, you know, pull the thumb. You know, I, I could have done a better job on that, on that play that was resulted in the touchdown. And I uh, just think, you know, talk, talk about the O2 team. Leadership was a big thing you heard about today when you pointed that out, that comparison to the team. Um, how important is that type of leadership in this type of, uh, you know, league where you're trying to just flip the page and flip things around? Yeah, I mean, a couple points there. So I'll go back to Brad. Uh, Pretty much each and every year, the last time. I don't know how many? You know, I'll, I'll show his quotes after that game, that specific game, and the way he talked about how he felt, how his teammates were feeling, and it was everybody taking accountability. Whether it was Gallery, Clark, you know, mm -hmm. whomever it may be, uh, Fred Russell, guys, you know, guys felt like you know they were responsible. It was a team effort, not just one guy. So you know, that's a takeaway, and you know, you've seen it with Jack Campbell. Now you're seeing it with with Jay. And I would tie that into another lesson, just like I talked about before, with uh, Brad learning from Kyle. You know, I think certainly Jay has learned from Jack, and encourage all of our guys. You know, if you want to be a good player, do, do what the, the guys on our team that are really good do. What they do, follow them. Those are the guys you want to watch, and try to model yourself after. And, um, so I've said this during the summertime. Jay is kind of like the anti-modern college day football player. You know, he didn't run off when Jack was starting in front of him. He learned kept working and he learned from Jack. And I think it's really paid off for him last year and it's paying off this year already. On the season with KG and uh, over the first couple games, we still haven't seen a lot of LaShawn Williams. Um, Caleb and Kamari look like they're getting more carries than him. Is, is LaShawn still recovering or is he fully healthy? Are we gonna see more of him going Yeah, I, yeah I, think, uh, I think he's healthy. That's first thing I wanna say is there was a run he made, not this week, but a week ago in practice where he hit, you know, got his foot down and boy, he made a really nice cut and it looked like, okay, I think he's, He's back to where he should be, and hopefully, uh, I think he is. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, we've rotated three guys for the most part right now, and there's only so many carries. But, yeah, LaShawn, LaShawn I'll go out and let him and say he's going to really, you know, do a good job for us this year. He's practicing well. I think he is healthy now, and, you know, he's, he's a well-rounded guy, so he'll play a lot for us, I'm sure. Kurt, Scott Dodd can begin with the, the athletic. I wanted to ask you about Troy, uh, Jared Parker. He took over at Purdue after you, I think it was after your game, and then mm -hmm. beat Daryl Hazel over there in 16. It's been in Notre Dame. And then he takes over Troy, which was you know, one 11 games last year, was really good in just about every statistical category, and then lost like everybody. Yeah. Where do you draw from to, to look back? I mean, is it just the first two games? Do you look back at what he called at Notre Dame or what he even did at Purdue? Or you know, how do you try to figure out what they may do and do? I don't want to say it's 100%, but there's a lot of DNA with West Virginia uh, stay, whether it be him and, and both coordinators uh, were there for several years in West Virginia. So I guess that'd be one place a special teams coordinator came from Akron, I believe. So, you know, you're digging out film from uh, previous places just to kind of see what they're thinking. And uh, there, there's, you know, there's some similarities and all those types of things. But And then we've got two game films at least, so that's it's way better than it would have been two weeks ago. 
Uh, but yeah, what you're referencing is just it's a sign of the times in college football too, especially uh, what Coach Parker had to you know walk into. It's tough. You know, a lot of guys uh, you know left and went to other places, and uh, that's one of the challenges I think modern day challenges of coaching changes now. You can see more of that, and that's that's tough. Kirk, you have to wrap Casey Seattle more. You know, talking to Hayden Warren on Saturday, and what a story he has, the resiliency that he's you know had to endure and overcome what he went through. And you talk about the resilient resiliency of your team. When you look at Hayden, just what impresses you? What is it like for you to watch his journey lead to this moment where he's playing you know, college real football after everything he overcame? I, I missed the first part. You said Hayden Large? Yes, Hayden. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, Hayden's a great story. I'm still trying to figure out how he ended up in my office. Uh, a couple of Decembers ago, he and his dad, and I, I figured they'd have you in Iowa tie because his name's Hayden, right? So I figured, okay, you must have family or whatever. They don't. They're from, uh, you know, uh, over in Michigan, the west side of Michigan. Uh, but just, you know, there was a, a connection a little bit through some uh, other sources or whatever and uh, showed up here. He's been a great guy since he's shown up here. And uh, I'm not saying he's Zach Van Valkenburg, but, uh, or Stilianos, but uh, comes from a smaller program, just came in here and worked. He's got an unbelievable attitude, a uh, really good learner, and very versatile in his, uh, in his play. And I think he's taken a real big jump, and that would be my comparison to Zach, because it's tough. You know, he came in here, and there's a lot of guys, uh, but he's worked hard physically, he's worked hard mentally, and uh, you know, he's a really, really versatile guy, can play the tight end spot for us and back in the backfield a little bit too. So uh, just a really, really good addition to our team and a really valuable team member. Uh, Adam Jacoby, Hawkeye Beacon, uh, the 75-yard pass play that was referenced earlier. Uh, Cohen Entringer came in after that, played the rest of the game at, at strong safety, and you've said a lot about how he's been practicing. Uh, sort of walk us through where his situation is with uh, um, strong safety right now and uh, where uh, Xavier Wampa's status is. Yeah, so, you know, Xavier's a good player, and uh, so is Cohen. They're both good young players. I guess, you know, one's a little bit younger than the other, but... Uh, the main, main difference is, you know, Cohen's missed a lot of time, you know, coming off that knee surgery. Uh, he, he recovered at record speed. I mean, it's just it's, it's amazing how uh, fast everything went. Every step got there a little quicker than uh, the quote-unquote book would predict. But um, all that being said, you know, he's playing catch-up right now. And uh, but we feel like we have a really good group of good guys back there. And Lover would be the next guy in line. So I think we got five guys that are capable back there. We'll let them keep working and keep competing. and. Um, you know, see where it all goes, but uh, you know, feel good about the group. And it's just, you know, a place like that happened, unfortunately. And that's, you know, when it happens, you just got to learn from it and try to uh, avert that in the, in the future. Awesome. Tom Kager, Hawkeye okay, Report. Hey, Kirk. Yep. Um, question about those goal line situations or inside the five with your running backs. Do you have a pre planned, like, Kamari's going to be in there or Deshaun, or, or how do you operate that? Is it by feel or is it by plan? By, by both, really. I mean, you go into it with a plan, and then also the feel of the game dictates uh, how you do things as well. So, you know, that's kind of how it goes. And I, I think the bigger issue, I mean, especially on that, that one play, uh, we had penetration on the right side. And that that, that was a hurt, hurtful play only because it was negative yardage. And so you got the ball down in there, and all of a sudden it's back on the four or five yard line. And, uh, just in offensive football in general, you know, losing yards was a bad thing, but especially down there, it just it just changes the whole complexion of things. But we still had opportunities, and we uh, it was you know run and pass where we we were good enough to cash, and we're going to have to improve in that area if we expect to win games. Sure. Chad Mike to you. Um, I mean, I guess you'd probably predict on the outside people are not happy about quarterback, um, but obviously you have you express some confidence after the game in case. I'm just curious, we didn't get to talk to him today, but yep. where is his con where how is he, have you seen him respond, I guess? And you still feel you know, confident with him? As I, I do. Yeah, I do. And I, I'll stay on the same page I've been on. I just think he needs to play. Uh, and he needs to learn from his experiences. The faster you learn, the better, obviously. But he's missed a lot of time. So I think he needs that. And it is a new offense for him. Uh, you know, whatever it be, his third one in three years, something like that. So uh, there's some learning going on there. But yeah, he, he can play better, and I think he will play better. You know, it's just a matter of working at it. There's no nothing magic we can do. Maybe eliminate some things, and, and you know, lean this way or lean that way, that type of thing. But otherwise, um, just count on him to play a little better. We need to help him more at all positions. So he responded. I mean, I was, my question was, has he responded pretty well this week? I got yeah, so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. We've, we've been on the field twice, and yeah, so far so good. 
talk about the freshman with the Des Moines Register. Just going off of that, like, how do you balance that? Obviously, now at one and one, there's like there's the margin for error is a lot smaller going forward. Like, balance that with the fact that, like you were saying, you also have to you're trying to be patient with K. How do you, how do you balance those kind of two? Yeah, I'll, I'll be real clear on this. I mean, we're trying to win every Saturday, so whatever Saturday it is, uh, that's the number one goal. That's the number one goal. But there's you know there's a bigger picture too. You're looking at and trying to. Um, factor in things like miss time, all those kinds of things, uh, whether it's Cohen or or Cade, whatever. And got a couple other guys that have missed time. Lee Sean mentioned him. You know where he's at right now. That uh, slows a guy's progress down. Certainly does. And it's a factor. So, and then you compare them to the other players that are at the position and, and go through it. But ultimately, it's our responsibility to get the best guys out there to give us a chance to win every every Saturday, and that'll always be number one. And then yeah. Keeping the bigger picture in mind too, and that, that's all about us improving in the areas like we just talked about. You know, if we don't do a better job inside the five, it's going to be tough to envision us having a good year uh, if we can't score some touchdowns in there. So, and then you know, one was off a turnover. You got to take advantage of that. I mean, you get the ball. I think on the twelve, that that possession. Uh, so those little things, those are the the things that really can get you more the big plays defensively. But, there's a lot of things to consider, but we're trying to win each and every Saturday. This one's gone. Now we're on to the next one and uh, fully aware. I mean, we've got 10 opportunities left. We've got to make our little count. Ethan Beecher, for Quad City Times. You mentioned Luke Elkin at Big Ten Media Days and at Media Day here in Iowa City. I'm curious, what does him being a veteran player in the special teams room do to uh, help Reese get comfortable as a first year player and then Drew to regain his confidence this year? Yeah, I mean, Love to talk about Luke on Tuesdays, right? Because you don't want to talk about him on game day. That's a bad, bad thing for a snapper. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's just, he's been just so good ever since he showed up here. And LeVar targeted him uh, in high school. Like he, he had come to camps and uh, LeVar felt, really felt strongly about him, stronger than most guys, not, not only because of his ability, but also uh, his character and his steadiness. And he's just been, been great to work with. I mean, each and every day he does well in each and every phase. Good student, good in the weight room, the whole nine yards. Everything he does is, is quality. So to have that in any room is important. You know, you want to have those veterans in that room, uh, any room that you're talking about, in the specialist room. Uh, if you look at it, you know, we lost Tori. He's a really good performer. So you got a guy in Reese who's young and inexperienced. Uh, and then Drew, you know, had a, had a tough ending to the season last year. To have a stabilizer in there is, is really valuable. And that's, that's part of building the team, too, is having – not only good players, but guys that can help, you know, just kind of steady things a little bit. So in a week like this, okay, now what do we do? How do we react? You know, Reese sure as hell didn't know, right? I mean, with all due respect, but why would he? Uh, you know, and then it's just those things are really valuable on a football team. Scott, Scott again. I, I, you, you said kind of at the beginning that setbacks or responding to setbacks is kind of a message that you had this week. And you look over the course of your career, that's probably – maybe your greatest strength and what you guys have been able to do after whether it's Penn State loss in 16 or come back and winning or a couple of years ago at Ohio State and coming back and winning eight games all the way back all the way to 02. Um, what, what is the common element in your messaging all these years that's been able to enable your team to, to go forward and not worry about what just happened and just kind of and, and, and have some success? Yeah, I mean, it's really pretty simple, and you know, unfortunately, I've got, got to live it. Uh, you know, when you're a one in ten uh, record owner of a one in ten record as a head coach, you know, we always get associated with our records are two and eighteen. I mean, that's a rough way to start. So, you know, at that point, you just believe in what you believe in. You know, not that you're always you're always looking at what you believe in and trying to get better at it. And yeah, you know, what what do we need to adjust? What do we need to do? You know, where where where's the attention need to be? But you know, ultimately, you got to, you know, at some point, you got to, you got to believe in something, and you know, you stick to your beliefs, and then you just try to do better at what you do believe in. And um, you know, I think all of us in in this building feel like, you know, we, we know what we need to do to be successful, and really, it's more about the doing. So, you know, it just it's being honest about what's in front of us, and you know, what did we do? How do we learn from that? But I think the single biggest thing, and, and being a pro football, probably helped me learn this uh, better, is you got to move on. Like you can't, you just can't waste time looking backwards. You, you can on Sunday, that's fine. But when Monday morning comes, uh, boy, you better be looking at the next next opportunity or you're going to be behind your opponent. And that's, 
Um, you know, it's, it's, it's easier said than done. I can put it that way. One thing about when we switched our practice schedules uh, back after the 14th season, the 15 year, it forces us now. We're on the field Monday morning, so we, we have to move on. And that's, uh, it's hard on the coaching staff Sunday to practice Monday, but the good news is like we're all moving on because there's no time to be, you know, dwelling on things or, you know, how we feel. Uh, forget about that right now. Let's see what's getting going here on the next one. Last question, John. John Simmons, your Athens Gazette. Your first game on the sideline. Just curious, your thoughts on the in-helmet communication, the sideline tablets, and any advantages or disadvantages that creates as you guys can make in-game adjustments, but also other teams can adjust to your defense. Yeah, it sounds like there's proper two at the uh, the tablets, like a player or two off, off, off schedule I'm missing. But overall, no, it's a real positive. And, and the coach the player thing's a real positive, too. So, um, it's kind of what we expected based on practice, but yeah, I think it's all positive and um, I don't have many suggestions in that way. We're just trying to figure out how to score a touchdown. We'll get the ball inside the five. That's why it's more important right now. So, okay. All right, thanks. All right, thank you guys. Thanks, Kirk. Yep.